Welcome back to the Law of Podcast. Um, welcome back to the Law of Podcast. Today we have a relentless, intelligent, creative human being in the room right now. But before we get to this special, special guest, we're going to introduce the room. We got the one and only, the smoothest, the flyest, Cousin Wyatt in the room. What's up, everybody? How we doing? <laughs> How we doing, bro? You doing good? We chilling, man. I, I love we that. The we love law. that. We at the law. But the man of the hour, the man of the day, and the man of the week, the man of the conversation, we got my brother, the laws. How are we? What up, Rich? Let's clap it up. Let's clap it up with the laws. Let's clap it up. How are we doing today, though? Yo, we good. Yeah? You know, I'm excited, bro. Like yeah. I said, I want to talk about this now for probably about a month I hit you up ago. That's a fact. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, you went down to the city. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. I do, Uh, it usually, I, you saying a month, probably people are watching saying, yo, it took you that quick. But... <laughs> This conversation to me is very important. I feel like this conversation is a different lane that I haven't even stepped into, and I want to learn more myself. Yeah, so it's a it's a lane where not a lot of people actually know about. Yeah. So like, unless you have like a special needs brother, sister, kid, cousin, something like that, you really don't think about it. Yeah. So actually, the way that I started with the Special Olympics and our CNY Storm team at the Fitness Mill with Eric DeCarlis. Shout out, Eric. Yeah, shout out, Eric. Eric is supposed to be here today. Um, <laughs> I saw it on Instagram. Yeah. And powerlifting's always been kind of interesting to me. I mm-hmm. I do it heavily. Um, I reached out to him on Instagram. I shot him a DM. I'm like, hey, you know, I see that you're running this on Sundays. Yeah. Can I come help? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, come help. I'm like, yeah, I don't care what I do. I don't care if I'm just there to take pictures, yeah. load plates, deload plates. Mm-hmm. I'll do whatever you need. Yeah. So really, it, you know, I showed up. Mm-hmm. First day, I kind of was in the background taking some pictures, deloading mm-hmm. plates. Mm-hmm. I didn't even introduce myself to any of the guys. Really? I was just, yeah, kind of like, just you know. Just play the background. Yeah, I was letting Eric do his own thing. Like, mm-hmm. I, not my spot to really get involved yet. Yeah. Well, as time went on. I was getting more and more involved. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden the guys are coming up to me. They're asking me questions. Mm-hmm. Eric kind of came up to me and was just like, hey, you know, I can use you full time. Yeah. So I was like, but like, what's that include? Yeah. Just every Sunday, you know, nine o'clock we train. Love that. So every Sunday, nine o'clock, we're there. At the fitness, <laughs> I love we're that. there at the fitness mill. And mm-hmm. so from there it went to, you know, just helping out to coaching. And then Mm -hmm. actually this past June, it'll be probably like June 15th, Mm -hmm. I think it is, will be one year I became a certified Special Olympics coach through the state. I love that. I was actually- Let's it up for my boy. (laughs) I love that. I was doing that all on my phone while I was in training at the post office for something else. I was sitting there like, yep, do this, clicking this button, doing all that. Yeah. And the teacher in the classroom was like, are you paying attention? I'm like, no, this is more important to me, actually. Yeah, yeah. And then we went to the state games that following week. Yeah. So that's really how it kicked off. I got to start from the beginning. Why are you so passionate? Truthfully, I don't have an answer for you. Mm -hmm. It was just more of, I was like, yo, this is kind of a cool opportunity to kind of just help out. It wasn't even like one of those spots where like, I want to give back. It Mm -hmm. was more of, I just want to help out. This yeah. is something cool. And that's really where it took off. Was, so you don't have someone within your family or close friends that has special needs? No. The closest thing I have is my mom worked at um, the like an adult center with people that had Down syndrome for okay. a while. She's an RN. So mm-hmm. like she worked there for a while. Yeah. And that's like the closest thing I had. I mm-hmm. came to having someone with special needs. Mm-hmm. I never met any of the people. Yeah. So like... Yeah, it was more of just out of the blue me reaching out saying like, hey, can I help you? Yeah, and you just went full-fledged. Yeah, I mean, I dove I dove in. You know, I went from, like I said, from taking the pictures mm-hmm. to Eric's kind of stepped back doing his other things at the fitness mm-hmm. mill that he needs to do. Yeah. And I'm basically, unless I really need him on a Sunday, it's just me there, me with about nine or ten guys, and we're yeah. just training. I mean, parents have my phone numbers. They're texting me. Yeah. Wednesday nights, if I can make it outside of work, yeah. I got like two or three of them that come mm-hmm. Wednesday from like six to six forty five, seven o'clock, and they do some extra activities, yeah. powerlifting wise, you know, accessory work or 
maybe an extra bench press session or extra deadlift or anything like that. Yeah. So for you, every Sunday, you're, you're very involved. There's more than just Sundays now, right? Am I, am I? So our main powerlifting class is from 9 a.m. to about 10, 10, 15 on Sundays. That's our okay. main class. That's the main day. Okay. Um, Wednesdays at 6, I'll take, you know, some kids – if I'll get in contact with their parents and, you know, yeah. we'll text back and forth. Hey, Jay can come at six. Rocco can come at six. And we do some extra one-on-one. I've also been helping out Eric in his Wednesday class yeah. at 630 if he needs me. Yeah. So there's been times where I'm in the gym on Wednesday and I'm like, Eric, you need help today? Yeah, come on in. And those kids really don't know who I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, me, to them, I'm just another face. Yeah. And, you know, I set everything up. You know, they may be walking the rope around that track. Mm-hmm. I'm just helping one of the kids hold the rope. Nothing crazy, mm-hmm. but it's just helping out Eric on whatever ways I can. I mean, this coming Saturday or the next Saturday, we're going to Syracuse for a State Games Expo thing. And mm-hmm. Eric has to give a video on why warming up's important. Mm. So we're in it full, full go. I mean, Eric's got a lot of things planned, and Eric's got me right there with him yeah. on – our CNY powerlifting team. So how many events come with the powerlifting team? Like how many events do you guys prepare for throughout the year? I know there's the Olympics. So we have, it all depends. We yeah. did starting, if we go back yeah. from last year in May, we did the pull for pause. Okay. Um, There was a deadlift meet only. Pull for, oh, uh, that's fine. Pull for pause. They did another powerlifting meet in Syracuse at Blood Iron Barbell. Shout out Rita West. <laughs> yeah. Um, we did the state games in Ithaca mm-hmm. where we had everybody place. So mm-hmm. we brought six guys. One guy got hurt in the celebra- like the party beforehand, mm-hmm. the night before. So out of the six, we had five guys compete. Everybody placed top three. That's fire. So we have, I think, two or three state record holders. Wow. Um, we did... State record. I feel yeah. like that's that was so walked up. State record. That's beautiful. Yes, we have three guys that had, are state record holders. That's beautiful. So then we did the um, Tom Brown. Mm-hmm. We are me and Eric were just talking today. Are they going to do the state games or Rita's meet in June? Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to go to the state games because it's actually the Special Olympics. Yeah. And with those state record holder guys that we had. All three of them on their first attempt and the Tom Brown this past meet, and I think it was in December, Yeah, all broke their own state record. Really? Yes. One of my guys, uh, Blake, hmm. he opened up with 315. Yeah. Broke his state record on his first attempt. That's I mean, wild. all of them did. How, how sentimental does that hit you? It's huge because, like, I see these guys, you know, work really hard. You no. know. Like I said, if you don't have somebody in the special needs community Mm -hmm. or like that, and you're at the gym, you don't really picture these guys doing this. Yeah. But you see some of these kids where, you know, they may not have the biggest, like, social grouping. Yeah. You know, but when they're in that gym and they're all together, you would think that it's, like, how we're all, like, serious in the gym and and lifting and all that. Mm -hmm. These guys are laughing, joking, and it's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Because, like, I can turn around and, like, I'm focusing on you doing your deadlifts right, Mm -hmm. but I turn around and I got Jordan and Carl laughing, breaking balls with each other, and it's Mm -hmm. awesome because, like, it's all just happy, fun. They're never mad. They're Mm -hmm. never disappointed. Yeah. It's all go get them attitudes, and they're all having fun. Yeah. And the one big thing is mm-hmm. you get done with your lift, they're all like, good job, good job. Yeah. He gets done with it, good job, good job. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're yeah. all there for Positive. each other. Yeah. Right. They Somebody gets off the platform, they all bum rush him. Yeah. You know, he may take one step off the platform. Yeah. They all bum rush him. They yeah. give him a hug, good job, yeah. proud of you. So it's awesome to see. So it's yeah. huge when it's even outside of lifting, you know, to yeah. just see these guys, how they are with each other as a team. Mm-hmm. To, you know how they handle each other and it's awesome that's that's beautiful i did you since you are i i've been in the gym with you we worked out in the same area and it's really it's really like gritty like it's great we really get you know what i'm saying we get to the to, to the pain as, yeah. we, as, we, as we would say did you have to retrain your way of how to train when you were training with them not at all actually really no i brought that a little bit i brought it back a little bit where yeah. like that intensity of 
you know, dialed in, headphones on. Mm -hmm. I I brought that back. You know, obviously, like, I'm not going to be yelling and screaming at them like we all do at the gym. But, no, I put them through the same type of workouts that, you know, my coach plans for me or yeah, yeah, yeah. this person does or anything. I put them through that same shit. Like, yeah, and they're down. They're down. I mean, if I tell them, hey, guys, we're doing five sets of 10 today or yeah. five sets of five or yeah. three by three or eight by two, whatever I tell them they're doing, yeah. they do it full. They don't ask questions. Yeah. The only questions they ask me, am I doing it right? Mm. That's all they ask me. They do whatever I tell them. Mm-hmm. They're all open to learning. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing for me is I had to understand how to coach each person differently mm, you know okay each disability like da- i'm gonna take somebody with down syndromes mm-hmm. and somebody with autism mm-hmm. and i'm gonna handle them a little bit differently yeah just based on what they have what's going on with them yeah. i mean some of them have lifting restrictions because of certain things and yeah. i've had to work and understand like all right you know this one can't really do this yeah so let's work on getting him in a comfortable spot mm-hmm. so that he can do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But other than that, I mean, those guys hit it full force. I mean, I treat them just like I would treat anybody else in the gym. What what uh currently right now, um, what disabilities are there? Yeah. So I have I think I have two or three kids with Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. I have and I have autism. Mm-hmm. So those are the two main ones. Mm-hmm. And so it's perfect though because like they can all do everything. Yeah. The only two kids that the two kids with Down syndrome we can't let squat because there's something in their neck that doesn't they can't balance a bar here. It's very, okay. Yeah. It's very dangerous for mm-hmm. them. So we don't really squat as a team. Mm-hmm. We should, mm-hmm. but just for their sake, we don't. Yeah. Because we don't. Eric and I's biggest policy is we're not excluding anybody. Eric's Instagram name is Fitness for All. Yeah. So. Everybody's included. I literally love that. So I literally love what you guys are doing. And I how I see it as you don't have to do it, but you're doing it and you're doing it well. So that's beautiful. Yeah, it's huge. So like our whole thing is everybody's gonna be included. Yeah. You know, we have one guy, his name's Carl. Carl the Crasher. We love him. Yeah. He's all about it. You know, yeah. he likes, you know, the videos we take of him. He wants to be on Facebook. Yeah. You know, it's awesome to see. It makes him smile. It's perfect. Yeah. He asked me, he goes, can I bring a friend? Bring him. Mm. I don't care. Bring him. That's beautiful. You know, all of a sudden I had this one kid, Jason. Yeah. I didn't know anything about him. He goes, yeah. hey, I'm here to train today. Eric told me about, come on in. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. You know, I'll get your paperwork after. Yeah. I, hit up, <laughs> I get your paperwork. I, I hit up that. Eric I after. Hey, you got so-and-so's paper. Yeah. All right. Whatever. I don't yeah. care. They're training with us now. Yeah. You know, it's awesome. I got, so we have Jason. He's. Mm. We call him Sleeves. He's yeah. in high school still. Okay. He's one of our state record holders. He's That's just fine. 114 pounds with a 215 deadlift. Wow. I mean, he's strong. 114 pounds. 114 pounds with a two, 215 deadlift. He's as strong as can be. Wow. He loves it. We call him Waldo, too, because he's always wa- – we can never find him. <laughs> he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> but I he mean, can pick something up. <laughs> literally, though. So, like, I'll be, like, coaching everybody on deadlifts, and I'll be like, where the, where the fuck is sleeves? And yeah, I'll yeah. turn around. He's all the way across the gym talking to somebody, doing curls. That's funny. I'll, That's funny. I'll be like, sleeves, get over here. It's your turn. Okay, does a set, wanders off. I'll turn back around. He's doing lap pull downs. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but he's a machine. He don't stop. Yeah. Love. I love to see that because I was talking to his parents and his parents were like, yeah, we, he goes in and out of activities where he kind of loses interest. But lifting weights mm-hmm. has been... You know, constantly. He hasn't lost interest in it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's been a while, which is That's huge. Beautiful. And shout out Sleeves. I love him. He's like a little brother to me, man. Yeah. I'll be Wednesday night. I'll be coaching him. He'll walk up to me and he'll take my hat. And I'll be like, man, what the hell is that? Yeah. And he's like, just because I can. I love him. <laughs> I love him. There's nothing better than him. I love it. I love that. Is there is is there a tough side that we don't get to see that you get to de- you have to deal with? Not really, honestly. Mm. Um because, like I said, Eric and I's biggest thing is fitness for all. Yeah. And that's Eric's whole motto. Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest, like, the toughest thing for me would be is I had a situation at the gym. I'm not going to say names. Mm-hmm. Um, Somebody used the R word. Mm. And when the kids were walking by. Mm. And it was on a Sunday. And I didn't address it or anything. Mm-hmm. Um. That was tough for me because I was like, yo, how are you going to say that? Like, yeah. I'm right here. Like, I have my hoodie on and it says coach on it. Yeah. Like, 
everything in me, I had to stop to confront this kid. Yeah. I didn't say anything. I let it slide. Yeah. Because I'm not going to make a scene in front of my kids. Yeah. That was hard for me because let's be honest. We've all said things we shouldn't have said. Yeah. It's part of life. Yeah. But to say it when they're in earshot away. Yeah. Really bothered me. That's just. That was like the toughest That's thing nasty. for me. But other than that, everybody in that fitness mill is great. Yeah. I mean, I have friends at Powerlift. They're huge. They're mm-hmm. awesome. They work with the guys. You know, they'll be t- giving them pointers or something when I'm helping somebody. Yeah. The parents are awesome. They help me when I need it. Mm-hmm. You know, they may take them aside and be like, all right, what do you want us to do with them quick? Yeah. Do this. Perfect. I mean, everybody in that fitness mill is awesome. Yeah. Do you have a, do you have a certain goal that you want to reach? Yes. What's that? So Eric and I's goal with the power lifting is we want to send a kid to nationals. Mm. That's that's our goal. Yeah. And the other thing is outside of the power lifting, speaking for Eric, is Eric wants to get this program huge so yeah. that everybody has fitness for all. Mm-hmm. And we bringing it back to our power lifting team. We're trying to get a girl on the team. We're trying to find yeah. we're trying to find a girl who wants to compete mm-hmm. or just power lift or even lift heavy in general. Mm-hmm. Those are our goals. And I think each goal has yeah. like there's little steps for each goal. I mean, yeah. finding a girl is like one of our smaller steps. Getting mm-hmm. a kid to nationals is a little bit bigger. And yeah. then Eric's end goal is, you know, huge. Get this program so big that everybody has access to fitness. Yeah. Um that's beautiful. <laughs> I just love that this is you do you do a lot so the fact that you find time to do this as well is just like that's that's heartwarming you know what I'm saying that's why it doesn't matter what I had on my schedule I want to just I know I want to do this episode appreciate that man like, and truthfully though it's with everything that I do got going on from working at the post office mm-hmm. to working at the bar on the weekend mm-hmm. I make it out at the bar at four o'clock in the morning yeah but it's easy to get up at 8 15. Get ready by 8.45 and show up to the gym at 9. Yeah. It's easy because no matter how tired I am mm-hmm. and, you know, I drink my Red Bull, I'm ready to rock and roll because I know for an hour that these kids are going to give me everything they got. Yeah. And no matter how tired I am, they always make me laugh. And yeah. I think laughter is the best medicine of all. So, exactly. so it's easy because, like, I know by 10.30 yeah. I'm going to be energized because – I was just spent laughing with these guys for the you know this whole past hour. How much how much respect and how much uh how honorable are you to the parents of these children? Big uh, respect and honorable is huge yeah. for me to, with these parents because I have some parents that stay. Yeah. And I have some parents that drop their kids off. Yeah. So the parents that stay, they get to see how I work with these kids one on one. Yeah. And the parents that drop these kids off <clears throat> They don't get to always see how I work with these kids one on one. Yeah. But I never have them call mm-hmm. and complain. Mm-hmm. Nobody talk calls and complains for Eric. So I know that their kids are saying that he's doing a good job and that I'm doing everything right. Yeah. Because I'm not getting any calls. Eric's not getting any calls. So it's huge because they're trusting me with their kid. Yeah. And let's be real, trusting anybody with any kid is it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. We only we had like one instance, yeah, where a parent kind of crossed the line, mm-hmm. and Eric and I addressed it, and it's been smooth sailing, right? And yeah. it was just more of him worrying for his kid because yeah. his son was picking up a mass amount of weights on the deadlift. Yeah, I mean he was deadlifting three fifty five for two, Jeez. I, and he was just worried. Yeah, because you know, with this particular athlete Blake. He has OCD so bad that he practices every little thing. Like, I'll tell him to do this. Yeah. And he zones in on it. He's literally Yeah, he's going to do exactly that. And sometimes his form gets a little scattered because mm-hmm. he's zoning in on something. He forgets something else. Yeah. So he was a little concerned, and I get that. Yeah. And we reached, you know, he reached out to Eric, and Eric and I handled it, and we're all smooth sailing. Yeah, that's fine. How does one... Signing their kid up. It's as easy as bringing your kid to the fitness mill. <laughs> at what it. time? At, you can go to Eric's classes in the morning on mm-hmm. su- or not on Sundays. I forgot what time what time Eric does his classes in mm-hmm. the morning. But Eric's classes at night at six thirty on Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, you can show up to the fitness mill on Sunday at nine a.m. Yeah, 
you catch Eric or I whenever, and we'll yeah. or even bring him to the front desk, and anybody will help you yeah. get into Eric's program or on the powerlifting team. I mean, we have guys that actually aren't even officially on the powerlifting team yet. Yeah, that they're gonna do their first competition in June. That's beautiful. So we, they just kind of hopped in, and we're gonna work with getting them in yeah. into the next meet. So it's as easy as that. Just show up to the fitness mill. I mean. Alex does a really good job of making sure mm-hmm. that Eric and I have what we need at the fitness mill. Yeah. How do you think uh how do you think the team feels that they get to do this with you guys? I think I know for I don't think I know for a fact that they love it. Mm. It's something that you know, we have one kid his name's Jordan, we call him Jordy. Mm-hmm. He is actually He's competed in the national games for skiing. Mm -hmm. So he's a super athlete. Yeah. He's all about it. You know, I'll be like, all right, guys, practice is over. And I'll be like, all right, bring it in. You know, everybody's all about it. They Mm -hmm. love it. I mean, they're all there for each other. Mm -hmm. I have some guys that text me on the side. Hey, what are we doing this week? What are we doing this week? Mm -hmm. Most of them beat me to the gym on Sunday. And when (laughs) they see me, they light up. They're all excited to be there. So... I think the guys love it. I mean, when we did the Tom Brown, you know, Dave Kingwater, shout out to you. You did an awesome job making sure all our guys got to compete. Mm -hmm. You know, he kicked it off perfect. He had them go first, and those guys loved it. I mean, they they really embrace it. That's beautiful. What's the the workout that your team is the strongest at right now? I would say deadlifting. Yeah? Uh, Is it because you're really good at deadlifting? (laughs) Um, <laughs> I would say partially that because yeah. I zone in on the technique there. And, yeah. You know, I want to shout out my coach, Gary Kasab. He gives me pointers in the gym. My boy, Gary. And yeah. those guys, and what Gary gives me pointers, I bring to those guys. Love that. So, you know, shout out Gary. I hope you're having a fun time in Florida, my man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so like, I would say deadlift. I mean, mm-hmm. because... They're all good at it. Some yeah. guys aren't the greatest benchers. Mm-hmm. That could be due to, you know, just some of them can't, you know, their bodies aren't lined up or yeah. just something like that where it, they can't help it, mm-hmm. but they work through it. Yeah. But everybody's a good deadlifter on our team. I love that. Uh, Y'all might have to teach me. <laughs> <laughs> I used to deadlift in the old mill. The old mill. It was before uh, it moved. I deadlift. I was deadlifting good with stretch. And you were there. I don't know if you remember this, but... You were right behind me, actually. You guys are all watching me deadlift, and I was killing it. Then they're like, Stretch is like, you want to go up again? And so many people are watching. So I was like, yeah, let's go up. I went up, pulled every single muscle in my back. <laughs> my technique got lost right when I lifted that thing up, and my back was hurting for months. So I haven't touched deadlift since. Yeah, so that our big thing is I always tell them, I'm like, hey, you got any sort of pain or soreness, let me know. Yeah. Because I don't want you guys hurting yourselves. Yeah. It's at the end of the day, I want what's best for you guys. Yeah. So if you guys are sore mm-hmm. or you're in pain or something's mm-hmm. bothering you, let me yeah. know. I'll take the whole team and I've done it before. Mm-hmm. So and so is, you know, I've noticed, oh, you know, he's not really with it today. Yeah. He likes to do shoulders or he likes to do arms. Yeah. All right, guys, we're done deadlifting. Let's go hit some curls. Love it. Try some, just so that I'm not losing interest in one. Yeah. So that everybody, you know, is zoned in having a good time because I know, all right, he'll do better at this today. Yeah. You know, it's little social cues like that that I picked up on. Like, Mm -hmm. all right, I noticed when he's doing this, I got to try to bring back his focus. So Mm -hmm. I may be like, hey, come over here. I need your help. Yeah. And it may be just as simple as take that clip off. Mm -hmm. Load that plate on for me. Yeah. Just something like that so I can get them reengaged. Yeah. And they all respond so well. Yeah. And everybody listens to me. Yeah. And to be honest, that's why I like the Special Olympics so much is because – Everything I say to them, they listen and they and they take it and they do their best with it. Yeah. But because I could tell somebody else in the gym, and you can attest to this, mm-hmm. you tell them something, yeah, they blow you off. Yeah, not these guys. These guys are awesome because these guys are like, they're like, all right, that's coach. Like we gotta that's listen coach. to what he says. Yeah, and it's an basically like an open book there. I don't care. We have all sorts of conversations from yeah. I got guys that are talking about wrestling. Yeah. To guys talking about baseball, yeah. football, basketball, TV shows. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But when it yeah. comes time to work out, it's time. They're there. How does it feel for you now? For you to be a coach? Awesome. Mm-hmm. I never thought really I would have coaching. You know, I played sports all growing up and I always said I don't think I'd ever be a coach. Yeah. Um, 
But to coach these guys, it's awesome. I mean, I've seen these guys progress from 100 pounds. I've seen one kid progress from deadlifting like 225 to mm. he pulled 405 at the time around. Mm. We haven't even been doing this a year. Mm -hmm. I've seen Jay. He couldn't deadlift. I mean, I think he was deadlifting like 115 mm -hmm. to now he's pulling 215. It's wild. You know, I got guys benching that are benching 95 yeah. for one, barely. Mm. Now they're benching 135, 155. I mean, it's huge because, like, it's almost like as I'm the one, like, I don't really know how to say, like, I have my hands in it, mm -hmm. but they're doing the work, and yeah. it's awesome to see. Yeah. Now, you, you, where you are in life now, um, I like to ask this question a lot in my interviews just to see where your head's at, and there is not a right or wrong answer, but would you rather be the teacher or the student in life? Both. You got to pick one. I got to pick. <laughs> you got to pick one. Student then. I love that. I would say the student because it's always, you can, the student can always become the teacher. Mm -hmm. And for me, like I said earlier, Gary helps me a huge amount. Mm -hmm. And with the knowledge that I've gotten from Gary, mm -hmm. I've been able to give back to these guys. Yeah. So I would definitely say the student because you can learn something from everyone. Yeah. It may be not the greatest thing you learn, but you know yeah. not to do that. Yeah. What's another form of therapy for you? You got a lot going on. I don't think there's a time that you're free. Like, what's your what's your free time look like? What's your downtime? My downtime, probably anywhere. I'm gonna sound crazy now, but <laughs> my downtime is probably anywhere from like 11 to 11:30. I mean, I'm probably just sitting on my probably at my counter watching TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, TikTok. Like TikTok do be busting. I ain't gonna lie. Like shit like that. I yeah. mean, you know, I may play some video games here and there, mm -hmm. but it's kind of just one thing after another. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got a crazy schedule. So for me, yeah, that late at night, but mm -hmm. the only problem with that is is I'm up early. Yeah. There's days I'm up at four thirty, days mm -hmm. I'm up at five, five thirty. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can ask anybody. There's been days I've been walking in the post office at three AM. Mm. So it's just how it is. Do you ever like, has there been a time where you were just exhausted and you went to, you went to coach and they could tell that you weren't all there? Yeah. And yeah. how did it make you feel? Um, the kids couldn't tell I wasn't, I okay. wasn't all there, but the parents could. Mm. And I ended up, at, I, I had, I hit a point not too long ago where I flat out, I told Eric, I'm like, listen, I need you to take this next Sunday. Mm. I need to sleep a little bit. I'm, yeah. I'm hit that point. Yeah. Because the week before, I mean, class was literally 9 to 930. Mm. I mean, I, I just didn't have anything else in me. I went home and I slept <laughs> all day. Yeah. I hit that point. Yeah. The kids really couldn't tell, mm -hmm. but the parents knew. So it kind of bothered me because I was like, damn, like these kids are looking forward to this hour, hour 15, yeah. hour and a half sometimes of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So for me, it bothered me. And that's where I just had to say, I, I need to take back, take yeah. a day next week. And Eric, listen, I need you to cover for me. And Eric does it, no problem. Yeah. If I need Eric to cover, Eric's right there for me. Yeah. And vice versa. You know, Eric knows that if he needs me, he can hit me up whenever. And I got him. What, do you, what are some kind, kind words you got for Eric right now? He has a beautiful program. Eric, a beautiful program. My, I got to say the best thing about Eric is mm -hmm. Eric is so open to anybody helping him mm -hmm. and anybody coming in the classes to take him. Yeah. I mean, Eric does a hell of a job. I mean, it goes from his personal training mm -hmm. to his, one of his fitness for all classes on Wednesday. I mean, they're the younger kids. Yeah. I think it's six to 13 mm -hmm. and they're on the balance. Oh, beam. so he does it really. He, also he does fitness for all. <laughs> he, he really does it all okay i mean in that younger class is around the balance beam i mean we had a kid in there i think he maybe been like seven or eight mm -hmm. and just to see the smile on his face because he was on the balance beam to me was huge mm -hmm. i mean eric does an awesome job with it i mean eric mm -hmm. is so involved with everything that you you're surprised because he has so much going on but no he does a tremendous job with that i mean that's beautiful i can't say enough about that so, now that you do this and uh, you, you're under the wing of Eric, would you ever see yourself opening up your own class, your own? I've had this conversation with Eric. At some point, I'd like to quit the post office mm -hmm. and do special needs something. Full-fledged. Full-fledged. I don't care if it's a pay cut for me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to me. I enjoy it so much yeah. that it doesn't matter 
the money doesn't matter because yeah. Sundays are all volunteer for me. Yeah. Um, the only thing I got, I, I'm on the books for at the gym for Sundays just so I could get a membership. That yeah. was like the only thing mm-hmm. that the perk was is I got a free gym membership yeah. out of it. But no, it's all volunteer work for me. But one day I'd like to transition to doing this full time mm-hmm. outside of powerlifting because when you go to the state games, mm-hmm. you don't re- like people that have never been there don't realize yeah. that the Special Olympics community is huge. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody's there to support everybody. As competitive as it is, it doesn't matter because at the end they make it so community oriented mm-hmm. that everybody's hugging each other, taking pictures. Mm-hmm. I mean, just being there last summer, watching other teams compete was huge. I mean, I took a quick break and I walked to get all the guys their lunch. Yeah. And I stopped and watched basketball for like a half hour. And it was incredible to watch yeah. that these guys are playing basketball. And it's a high level of basketball. Yeah. I mean, these guys are playing competitively high level basketball. Yeah. So it's amazing to watch. That's fine, man. So how does one like what I I want to I want to do something I don't know the way you speak about it and the way Eric is so passionate about it you are too I want to see I want to be a part I want to help how does someone help I would just reach out to Eric like I did I mean yeah I literally shot Eric a DM message and I was like hey can I help you yeah and Eric will be the first person to say yeah come on in I mean you can always reach out to the Kemberman Center and try to get a I know they have jobs open over there and mm-hmm. do their thing down there mm-hmm. I really don't know how that works yeah. that's more of Eric's Avenue yeah. Eric started there. Eric has all his resources from there. Mm-hmm. I started just from under Eric in the gym. Mm-hmm. So that's something that you definitely have to reach out to Eric to and ask him. Mm-hmm. But if you want to do something inside the gym or something local, I mean, just reach out to Eric. It could right. be anything. If you are went to high, college for track or soccer, baseball, basketball, anything like that, mm-hmm. reach out to Eric. Eric can get you connected with someone so that maybe you could help out on the track and field, Special Olympics, baseball, basketball, whatever it may be, swimming, it doesn't matter. Yeah. What are some words you have for someone that has a special needs family member? Bring them down. Bring them down to the fitness mill. I mm-hmm. mean, if you want them to get involved, yeah. bring them down. We accept everybody. I mean, don't don't be shy. Don't be nervous about it. Yeah. Just bring them down. I mean, mm-hmm. we treat everybody the same. I yeah. mean, it doesn't matter what your disability is. If there is no disability, whatever, bring them down. I mean, trust me, you'll your kid will have a great time. I mean, yeah, kid, fam, whatever. They don't even have to be a kid. They can be older. I, yeah. I have guys on my team that are older than me, 47, 40, 30. Oh, really? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Bring them down. I mean, they can do Eric's adult class. Does yeah. not matter. Bring them down. Get them involved. I mean, doesn't hurt to try. Yeah. Um. Do you still currently work out at the fitness mill? So I switched over to Bane's Barbell. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Aunt Jafoon. Your gym's awesome, my man. The GOAT. Yeah. Um, I switched over to there. Um, the powerlifting cage got turned into a boxing room, mm-hmm. which I think is an incredible room in itself. Yeah. And Alex did a good job of setting that up. Mm-hmm. But without there being a powerlifting room and Ant's gym being geared towards powerlifting, I switched over there. Yeah. So – I train at the fitness mill on Wednesdays and Thursdays when I have a client. Yeah. Um, on this with the special needs. Yeah. So I'm there part of the time, but I'm mainly over at Baines. Mm-hmm. Um, the goal is hopefully that you know I've ants had this question asked when he first opened the gym: Will there be special needs uh, classes or mm-hmm. able to go and train there? And Ant said that maybe down the road. So it's a conversation that I want to have with Ant yeah. and see if maybe I could bring some of the guys down and yeah. do a little bit of lifting there. And I'd have to talk to Ant. I mean, yeah. Ant's in Florida right now, so yeah. I'd have to talk to him, but it's a conversation I want to have with Ant. What do you say? Let's talk about Ant's gym for a second. What are your words about Ant's gym? You're, we. This is newer. It's awesome. I mean, Ant's gym is it's a private power lifting gym, but mm-hmm. we, you know, if you want to learn about powerlifting, Ant is one of the guys to go to. The GOAT. Ant's a very good powerlifter. Um, like I said, Gary. Gary's going to be – Gary's got a bright future ahead in powerlifting. Gary's, the GOAT. Gary's one of the, going to be one of the best around. Um, so with that, I mean, it's a good gym. I mean, it's got everything you need, mm-hmm. even outside of powerlifting. It's got everything you need. Mm-hmm. Um, we always say atmosphere over everything, mm-hmm. and it's – it's definitely worth checking out. Reach out to Ant, shoot him a message, and see if 
You can join the private club. Yeah, come try. I love love that the powerlifters, you guys are a team in in itself. Without having a team, you guys are a team. Yeah, definitely. The fact that you guys saw that moment to just make create your own gym that's just beautiful well it was really ant yeah so i know it definitely ant, but in, in itself all of you guys transferred over to yeah I, I mean yeah we were all going regardless yeah. i mean ant had a future had an idea with it and he really brought it to life and i couldn't be happier for him yeah love that so now um do you have any wise words for the people that are watching I mean, yeah, definitely I do. Um, I think everybody should get involved yeah. in some sort of community thing. I mean, I consider my getting my hands involved with the Special Olympics mm-hmm. as community work in a way. Yeah. But I definitely think everybody should get involved with something that they're passionate about. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I didn't start off as to think that this would be something I'm passionate about. It was yeah. more of just a help. Yeah. And now it's something that, you know, you ask me. Oh, what are you doing Sunday morning? Oh, I got a coach. I coach the Special Olympics. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the first things that come out when yeah. somebody asks me what I'm doing Sunday morning or yeah. something interesting about me. Yeah. That's one of the first things that come out. So I think everybody should try to get their hands into something that they're passionate about. That's fire. That was beautiful. Well said. And yeah, I love that. All right. It's on you, Wyatt. Wise words. That's hard to follow. Man. Like, <laughs> I, I've just been sitting back here. I'm like, this guy is a great guy. Like, He's a great this, guy. Everything that you're doing sounds like you can tell you're passionate about it when you speak because you're speaking very well. And everything just sounds good. Um, and even now, I want to check it out. I mean, yeah. like, you got me interested. Yeah, right the way now. he speaks about it, it's so passionate that it's like in, it's impossible to me to be like. like Calm down. Sunday. Yeah. I mean, even if I've had other guys, you know, shout out to Mario. Um mm-hmm. Mario sponsored all of our um, equipment. You oh, know? really? Yeah, sponsored it all. So um, CNY Custom Concrete and Seal, I think that's the name of his business. Mm-hmm. Not 100% sure. Sorry, Mario. <laughs> but Mario did that all, and I made sure that those guys like knew that, hey, this is Mario. Mario is the reason why we have CNY Storm on our bags, mm-hmm. our singlets, our shirts. You know, I made sure that those guys got credit. So, like... You know, Mario's even passionate about it when just by doing that, you know, Mario's not always around, Mm -hmm. but to me, he was passionate enough about other people and, you know, just helping out. And he did all of our, you know, our gear for us, Mm -hmm. you know, and even like Dave Kingwater, you know, he went out of his way. He was passionate about powerlifting. So he went out of his way to make sure that all the guys we needed to compete competed in the Tom Brown and no one felt left out. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a bunch of people. Rita West is another one. Mm-hmm. You know, made sure we, she had openings for our Special Olympics team. It's So, yeah, I would just say try to get involved in something that you're passionate about. Yeah, I love it. I guess it's on me. And I got to follow up him again. I thought if I go to you, <laughs> I'd be good. <laughs> that went off again. Now it's, all right. For me, I would say, uh, you can't be laughing now. Uh, I got it. Okay. Okay. My wise words, honestly and truthfully, it's going to be today. Uh, be honest with yourself. And it's as simple as that. Be honest with yourself. And if it hits you, that means you was lying to yourself and you shouldn't be doing that. But if you are uh, honest with yourself, you get the best out of yourself because you know where to improve. Yeah, so I agree that's, that. that's what I would say. Be honest with yourself. But uh, I do want to, where can they find you? Where, where like uh, social medias, where can they find the the page? Uh, um. So, if you want to find the page I, about anything with more of just a fitness for all group, I would follow either the fitness mill page on Instagram mm-hmm. um, and Eric's Instagram fitness for all. That's quite literally the name fitness for all mm-hmm. Eric DeCarlis. He is the one that posts everything. Mm-hmm. The fitness mill posts more. Um, if you want to reach out to me, I don't really post a lot about it unless mm-hmm. we have a meet or anything. It's a uh, Thurston 98 on Instagram. So mm-hmm. that's my main form of social media. Mm-hmm. And just shoot me a message or shoot Eric a message or even just pop into the fitness mill at any time. All those guys at the front desk Mm -hmm. either know something about it or I'm friends with them and they know to hit me up Mm -hmm. or they'll hit up Eric. Love it. (laughs) Okay, coach. (laughs) Well, this is The Loft, uh, an amazing talk, uh, an important conversation too. I'm happy we even had this. I do want to do an in-depth. I want to bring Wyatt, grab a camera. And like show 
what it looks like, a typical day. Definitely. Day. I mean, just hit me up yeah. and we can get something set up. I, I mean, want to show, like, within this episode, hopefully when we drop this, we can show what it was like to see these kids. Yeah, kill. I mean, just let me know. You yeah. got my number. Yeah. Hit me up and I will definitely... You know, I may have the guy, I may have you guys kind of off to the side so yeah, yeah. you guys don't get distracted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, no, definitely have you guys just, you know, taking some pictures and take some videos and yeah. show you what it's about. I mean, Love it. if you go to my Instagram, I'm not sure if I'm private or not, but mm-hmm. if I'm not, you can go and you can see pictures from the state games in Ithaca. And yeah. One of the moms did a great job of getting action shots of me actually coaching the kids. So, yeah. I mean. It's the, you can see some of it, but yeah, yeah you definitely got to grab a video. Yeah, I'm with it. Uh, yeah, do a little, do a little uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, man, I'm all for it. I love it. The Loft season four, we got another great one. Subscribe, like, and comment. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Bow, bing, boom. Booyaka. All right. <laughs> Sometimes I can help it Oh yeah, I know that season's coming